Hello, in this video, we are going to discuss the Nemersdorf Massacre. Now, if you're reading Salt of the Sea with me in the classroom, then this is part of the story. It comes up in the beginning chapters up uh, between pages 9 and 52 in the paperback novel. If you are somebody who is sensitive to violence, you don't like to read about it, you don't want the details, you do not listen to, need to listen to this video. This is completely optional. I don't have any direct pictures. Um, I think that are too hard to see. But if it's something that's uncomfortable for you, it's, it's nothing that you have to read about. So we're talking about the Prussians fleeing, right? Now, Prussia had become part of Germany in 1853. So not even 100 years have passed. And so the people of Prussia are going to keep their culture. They're going to be very distinctly different than people of what we think of mainland Germany around Berlin, which is going to be, of course, different than people in Poland or people in Austria. So even though they speak the same language, there's a different culture. And on page 22, Joanna tells us, terror was out there and it chased us. And so we ran west toward parts of Germany not yet occupied. And here's a photo of East Prussian refugees. And so I think this photo ties in really well with the story that we're reading about the people just taking what you can carry. Um, it mentions a cart, right, um, that Amelia looks at full of people's possessions. And so this photo, I thought, reminded me well of the story. So we're going to read about Nemersdorf, East Prussia, 1944, specifically October 21st, 1944. Again, a massacre is when there's a large group, a mass of people that are killed. If you are sensitive to that information, you do not need to continue. So what we have is the Red Army or the Soviet Army, who are part of the Allied forces, are pushing the Nazis back to Berlin, right? They're pushing them west. So this was the Eastern Front. Um, if you ever watch a movie, it's the Eastern Front that's talked about, like, that's the place you don't want to go. The harshest fighting. And a lot of this goes back to the fact that the Soviet Union, when it was Russia, ended up having to surrender to Germany in World War I. There were very harsh treatments given to the Russian people by the German government at the time. And so a lot of this people feel is a cultural revenge. And even though it's leaders and nations who go to war, it's the people who fight them. And so many people had family stories that they bring with them from here. And so this is what's going to start to push the army into territories that were previously occupied by the German Nazi government. Okay, so there's conflicting information with this. The Nazi German authorities organized an international commission to investigate. They had neutral countries looking at the information. And so the Nazi government reported this massacre to be completely true. Uh, we're going to look at both sides of the story. Here's a photo. And talking about the fear, civilians fleeing through the dark forest of East Prussia. And I know this is a difficult photo, but you can see the gentleman in the front right? Um, carrying two suitcases, he's got a pack on his back. There's a woman behind him. And then you see, it looks like another woman with a young child and it's in motion. These people are truly fleeing, right? Uh, and I think that's a really good thing to think of when we uh, think of <clears throat> the story. So at the massacre, there were reports that approximately 72 women, females, ages eight through 84, were killed and raped. Civilians, some of them, had been nailed to barn doors in a crucifix style. Most of the civilians were killed with, basically beat, with either shovels or <clears throat> the ends of rifles, the butts of rifles. There were also 50 Belgian and French POWs, prisoners of war, who were there to take care of thoroughbreds. If you know anything about Prussia, Eastern Europe, very high lineage of horses, very important part of their culture. They were shot. So the prisoners of war were shot. 
Now, what was the overall effect of this? So let's hold the story that we think of as we're reading Salt to the Sea, right? Um, on page 35 of chapter Amelia, chapter 16, says, um, after fleeing through Nemerstoff, I met an old woman. So it tells us that she directly fled Nemerstoff, right? Um, and then it doesn't say much in my... Ah, sticker fell out. And then Joanna mentions to Eva that she was in Nemerstoff. And I, uh, so we don't hear specific details in the story, but we are told by the fact that people are not talking about it, how bad it was, right? And so what was the overall effect is that civilians react immediately. The advancing Red Army, they're being told the Nazi government, this is, this is 44, they're reporting what happened. There's photos. Um, it's going to be in the newspapers. And they do get a lot of volunteers joining the Volkstrom. And the Volkstrom, Eva's husband is part of the Volkstrom, are the People Volunteer Army. They're going to join up and start to fight. So one effect was talking about this massacre encourages people that before were not part of the army, were not resisting the Soviets, thinking of themselves as civilians to take a turn and join up. Overall, a huge group of civilians are going to panic and start to flee. They are afraid. What's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to my town? Um, here's some photos that were used. Uh, we do know that during an air attack, Soviet soldiers went into what people, local people were using as a bunker. There were already 14 men and women in the bunker at the time. Uh, when they were leaving, evacuating it, all of the German citizens were shot. And here's a uh, mass grave for 13. Uh, the grave is in, written in Germany, um, 13 Germans who died. Um, here is a photo of people that died. So this could very well be associated with the bunker story, right? Where do we get our information from? Where do we get our facts from? We're getting them from German archives where there's many, many witness statements, both people that were part of the Nazi government, uh, military, as well as civilians. Also interviews with prisoners of war who were able to flee the area in the chaos. What changes is that after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, we have access to new information. So a lot of people say, no, what happened was what happened in the bunker. Those people were killed. The rest of it is made up. Some of those people weren't even from that part of the area. They brought in bodies from other areas. And it was just to create panic and fear within the civilians so that they would fight against the Soviets, um, so that they would join the volunteer army. Right Here's a home that was destroyed we can look at these photos from anywhere. Here's, here's a map of what they're doing, right? So these people are fleeing west, hoping to get closer to where the Nazi German <coughs> soldiers, there's more of them, and they'll be able to protect them. That's what they're fleeing west for. They don't know where they're going. Um, what we read of in the end of 22, right, is the Gustav the ship. And that, so that's where people start to hear about that the German government will help you leave. They can take you by ship and take you directly to Germany. So you don't have to walk across Poland. And that's where the people in our story are going to be heading. And they're all fleeing from the advancing Soviet army. So we may know more about it. We may debate it, but at the time of the story, the people that we're reading about had just heard of this terrible massacre and they were fleeing. They were in fear for the advancing Soviet army. 